Rio Beach. Oh, the yeah. music scared you. That's right. I thought, these guys are fantastic. But it was scary. The music was scary. Pushed me to the edge. And I thought, the, the sound of Gar Garcia's guitar was like the claws of a, of a tiger. It was like, they were like, it was like, dangerously scary very very to the point you can't talk about this stuff I thought to myself one of these they, these guys are going to be greater than the Beatles someday it wasn't as though I just thought that it was almost like a revelation like looking into the future I just instinctively knew that there was something they were gonna like that big time. yeah there was like <laughs> not, not even in, not even that I actually thought about it in those terms but I did think these guys are going to be greater than the Beatles hmm. it made it that it, that was this that was the way the thought that was the way I recognized the thought I was having about it I mean that was the terms in which it, I sub vocalized uh -huh. that to myself and um, in a way they are because the Beatle was uh, the Beatles were a phenomenon that was a phenomenon of the universal attractiveness of their music and uh, the 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 intense uh, teenage involvement you find that intense teenage involvement in dozens of different bands and you find excellent musical output in dozens of different bands they still and they create a lot of fans they don't have not created the kind of, of uh, thing that's associated the with the culture. band it's, mm -hmm. it's different it's a totally different thing yeah, it it's so totally different, different that there's a a uh, university professor in North Carolina that is studying them as an, as a specific mm -hmm. phenomenon. Phenomena. Yeah. So what did you do with that? I didn't, well, you know, I mean, I was I went on. They played for a while, and then they did, and they played again, and all these other things were going on. And then there was this one paranoid little sucker in there, and he thought something, and I picked up his thought because we were all linked together. It was this total telepathic loop. Which meant that it was like uh, like being in a very noisy cocktail party inside your head, uh -huh. and <laughs> and he this guy saw somebody come into the place that he thought was a narc. He thought narcs. I thought narcs. And I went right up the side door. I was gone. So was I because it wasn't illegal yet, was it? it? There was all kinds of drugs going on there. It didn't matter. Yeah. It was just this guy's paranoia came it, you know, on my party line, paranoid. and out I went. So I mean I don't I wasn't even uh, I don't think I was in the, the 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 thing about me pushing the the chair around was maybe you know ten or fifteen minutes. Well, it was just and somebody then, else's and then, salient and memory. I saw one set of grateful <laughs> chair and some other stuff somewhere. and I was gone I was out I was uh -huh. running up the road. But you went to see them again? Oh yeah, but it was a while. I, that was that was so freaky. The whole that whole trip was so freaky that uh, that I thought. They were messing with something that was probably very dangerous. Is what I mean. This is not so good. Well, wait, not so good. They were going to be bigger than the Beatles. This is not so. That good. was them. That you was my. That was my, that was me standing in the room listening to them play their set. Uh huh. I thought that right, and then, but then the all the rest of the. Then I went into, I went on a cosmic trip into other other uh, chambers of the universe and. And for the rest of that night, and then a few day, uh, the next day or a few days later, I, t I talked to Kesey. I says, "Hey, you know, you're messing with stuff from from ancient ancient stuff, right? This is and without any maps, <laughs> we're this maybe not uh, maybe need to be careful about this. It was kind of scary." And he kind of laughed at me. Well, it's sort of like the guy that uh, that gets on a roller coaster for the first time. Supposing some guy some guy was a uh, was a uh, so uh, Yanomon India or something, right? And he comes out of the forest, and the first thing he does, somebody puts him on a roller coaster, right? He's never even seen civilization. Somebody puts him on a roller coaster, uh, right? So his, right. Yes. He's going to go he, back and say, "Boy, civilization." No, he just you know, no, no. <laughs> what it is is that you'll, you'll get off that thing and say, "That's very dangerous. That's scary, right?" Oh, I see. And yet, other people go around and around again and again and again. Wait, you know, they're familiar you, with you it. taken acid a lot. Oh, I take so it. It wasn't the acid that was the scary part. It was the Grateful Dead. No, it wasn't the Grateful. Yeah. It was it was the linkage was the scary part. Yeah, the, the prankster thing, the prankster okay. thing, right? The, which the, the mind. Yeah, which was, which the Grateful Dead were part of. I mean, Grateful Dead were, were right. pranksters. Right. They were musicians. They were also pranksters. It was like, 
um, I the next time I saw them was at uh, the Fillmore Acid Test, and I met Phil, and uh, I walked over to him and I said, "I'd like to work for you guys," because I had decided that they that this was the most amazing thing I'd ever run into. But he says, "Oh, he says, well, we don't have a we don't have a manager." <laughs> I said, I don't think I want to be a manager. He said, well, we don't have a sound man. And I said, well, I don't know anything about that either, but I guess I could probably learn. Sounds more like more fun. <laughs> and uh, that's how that happened. And uh, for a long time, it was like, no matter whatever else we were doing, we had to be at the acid test every week. That was it. They were, as part of it is totally committed part of it. No matter what other shows we did or anything else, Saturday night, we were there. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, I don't know how many of those I would have gone to. I didn't actually think of myself as a prankster per se. I found it all kind of scary. And I found it all, every time, was it provided days and days and days of sorting it out, putting it together, trying to get it together. It was sort of like... A, a crash course in how to become a jet pilot when you had never seen a jet before. And the way they did it was they dropped you in there, took you up and said, the controls are yours! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Barrel rolls! <laughs> Immelmans! <laughs> you know, <laughs> tail spins right into the ground sometimes. Uh-huh. And uh, But psychically, you recover from all those. I guess if you're tough, and I guess most of us were, Occasionally, some people weren't. It's unfortunate, but because of the way in which it was uh, undertaken in those days, and the fact that we used to take huge amounts of acid, we used to take you know, 250, 300 mics or more. Kizzy preferred 400 or more. And uh, Albert Hoffman told me that that was a substantial overdose. I said, yes, in retrospect, we realized it was. But what do you consider an optimum dose? Oh, I don't know. People. Nowadays, seem to take around 100 or 150, something like that. All I know is that the result is that people, it's, you know, it's like uh, first you get in the, first you have training wheels on your bike <laughs> before you get the 1,000cc Yamaha, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a little different effect, and the result is that people don't get so crazy, I guess. But in those days, everybody got kind of crazy, and some people crash landed, and other people uh, managed to make it further down the road but the whole scene became very 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 loud and very weird it attracted a lot of tension it required it it attracted a lot of social concern Mm. because a lot of people were experimenting with radically different social uh matrices matrices which were not which which were uh, frightening to the our cultural leaders and societal leaders you know the police and the legislatures and all the people who bait or the business community basically the people who are concerned with maintaining a, a stable society saw this as a very uh, threatening and frightening phenomenon there's a lot of people acting very weird and doing things that just didn't fit and they uh, passed a lot of laws against it and tried to suppress it in various ways whether or not the whether or not the psychedelics would have been in, uh, included in the in the various ma- in the in the basic matrix of anti-drug laws or not, without the heavy influence of some people like Bart Linkletter, I doubt right. he was very he made it that myth about his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. that was a myth. Well, she did throw herself out a window, but uh, you know I, it was very convenient. I heard that she was not on it, but just the fact that she had been oh. taking it right. was it not? You're right. Somewhere in the past, oh, before she did it, she, she had taken it. No, there were a lot so. of, of bogus oh. stories. Several like that. other people say things people like that. People went happened. blind staring at the sun stories. I remember <laughs> those. Right, yeah. Santa Barbara, 1966. I do remember all this. Chromosome those damage. Yeah. See, now there was there were scientists coffee. ready to cough up all this crap yeah. to suit the political agenda. Well, we still see that. But I, some I, I don't people see do. So, the thing about crashing into the walls, right? Mm-hmm. Sure, we were taking large doses because that's what we thought was the right amount. And some people were, cra- were psychically crashing into walls, yeah. and when nobody had, nobody knew about it. We didn't come. We didn't come with a shaman, with a with a yeah. uh, a thousand years or ten thousand years or a hundred thousand years of traditions, and yeah. uh, and and a ring of people holding your hand.